Well, greetings, everyone, whichever the time zone you are currently in. Um, my name is Alexander Boskovic, and I am a co-director of East Central European Center at the Herman Institute here at Columbia University. And um, I'm glad to welcome and introduce you to the closing installment of our film webinar series that started in the fall last year and lasted through the ongoing 2020-2021 academic year. Um, the Central European Center's film series, which is titled Contemporary Society and Its Discontents, uh, consists of screenings and discussions of films that comment on various aspects of contemporary life in East Central Europe. We selected a number of films from the region that are produced and released in the past five years. And um, all these films focus on various social or socio-political issues that are specific for this part of the world and at the same time are often universal issues. Um, and we are happy to have with us today our distinguished guests who will be introduced by my colleague and co-director, Christopher Harvard, to who I now turn the floor. Thank you, Sasha, for uh, uh, welcoming people and uh, introducing the series. Uh, it's, a, it's been a great run, I think. We've had some great films and some great conversations uh, with the filmmakers about them. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to this one as the last installment. Uh, so we're very happy to have a, a, a few important guests today. Uh, on the Columbia side, uh, Sasha and I are joined by our colleague, uh, Carol Rounds, who is the senior lecturer in Hungarian. Uh, in the uh, Italian department here at Columbia. Uh, and um, uh, she is uh, uh, the author of um, textbooks and uh, gr reference grammars on the Hungarian language uh, and a very distinguished uh, uh, language instructor here and, and holds the uh, Pro Cultura Hungarica Award for uh, her support of, of uh, teaching the Hungarian language and, and culture. And so she's going to help us have this conversation uh, uh, with uh, today's filmmaker. And that's going to be facilitated by uh, Miriam Grunwald Farkas, who is a uh, freelance uh, literary translator and English teacher in Budapest. And she's going to be helping to get our, uh, our director's responses as precisely as possible uh, into English. And, um, and of course, we are joined by uh, uh, today's uh, director herself, uh, uh, Jofia Silaji, and uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome her. Uh, she comes to film uh, through a sort of dual path of education. Her, she took her first degree uh, in teaching Hungarian language and literature at the University of Pécs, uh, and then continued her education uh, as a film and television director at the Academy of Film and Drama uh, in Budapest. Uh, and during her study, she was awarded a, a scholarship from the Leonardo da Vinci program, uh, and studied production at the Mediopolis Film und Fernsehproduktion in Berlin, uh, and also took part that year in um, a project, uh, Heimat Europa, uh, an audiovisual project that was uh, initiated by the Kolleg für Management und Gestaltung Nachhaltige Entwicklung, uh, where she was a, a scriptwriter and camera assistant. Um, following graduation, she worked uh, as an assistant to the award-winning director, uh, Ildiko Enyedi, at the Hungarian Academy of Film and Theater. Um, in 2012, she directed If You Can, a documentary that was supported by the European Integration Fund. And she's worked on several short features and documentaries. Um, she also served uh, as an assistant to director Ildiko Enyedi on the film On Body and Soul, uh, which uh, won the Golden Bear at Berlin in 2017 and was also nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar. The film we're going to discuss today, uh, One Day uh, from 2018, is uh, Jofia's uh, feature debut. Uh, and it was awarded a Fipreshi uh, Prize, that is an International Film Critics Award uh, at the Cannes Festival in 2018. And so we're, uh, we're just thrilled to have uh, this film as part of our series and to welcome uh, uh, Jofia Silaji to our discussion today. Good evening or good night for you, <laughs> or good, good day. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the, the three of us on the Columbia side are going to sort of uh, uh, alternate questions to get our, our discussion going. 
Uh, for those of you who are uh, following um, on the, you, uh, I'm sorry, the Zoom webinar, you can submit your questions at any time through the Q&A function, and we'll, we'll get to those. Uh, and if you are following this program uh, on YouTube, you can use the chat function there, and those questions will be forwarded to us, and we'll read them aloud so that uh, our guests can have a chance to respond. So, uh, Carol, would you like to start off with the first question for our director today? Yes, hi, thank you, and uh, welcome, uh, Jofia. It's very nice to meet you. I'm, I'm very thrilled to meet you. Uh, I enjoyed your film very, very much. Um, it was, it, it's a, it's like a tight, tight film about a tight, tight day. Very uh, well orchestrated, very tense movie about a very, about a very difficult and a very ordinary day. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, so I have lots of uh, observations about your film, but I will start with one um, and something that you mentioned during your interview at Khan um, about the kind of the, the narrative role that Sobolch's um, infidelity had in the film. So it's not discussed very much. It's at the beginning. It's a big feature of it. And at the end, it's a big feature of it. But through the rest of the day, it doesn't come, uh, it doesn't come into the act action of the film. And your comment in Khan was that you felt that you needed another underlying text in order to maintain the, uh, the viewer's attention in a particular way. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that narrative role. Szerintem ez egy nagyon érdekes kérdés, hogy mi az, ami összetart egy filmet. Hogy állt so, I think, I think, I, I, yeah. So I, the big question is how 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 a film comes together and what keeps it together. És engem mindig nagyon érdekelt, hogy ha ez nem egy nagyon erős történet, akkor mi az, ami mégis képes összefogni az eseményeket. So even if the the activity itself is not something that that should take over, she was always interested in 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 how that comes together and what can keep it together. És vannak vannak kedvenc filmjeim, nyilván mindenkinek vannak, de hogy ami ennek a filmnek előképe is, vagy nem előképe, nem tudom képen a a struktúrája szempontjából fontos előzmény volt. Az egyik a a Chantal Eckermannak a Jean Dillmanja, ami so one of the films that um, was kind of a, a, a predecessor, I should say, as far as the structure is concerned, would be uh, uh, Jean. What was the name of the film again? Can you repeat it? Jean, Jean Dillman. Jean Dillman's film. Uh, Chantal Ackerman, Ackerman, the Belgian, the Belgian film director. You, you know, her, uh, and she has a very famous film. Neki, ami, amiben tulajdonképpen egy nőnek ilyen teljesen hétköznapi ö, cselekedeteit látjuk, de azt is tudjuk, hogy a háttérben, ö, ahhoz, hogy fenntartsa ezt az életet, ö, mit csinál a hátsó szobában. So the everyday, through the everyday activities that, that are, are, are portrayed in the film, you still have uh, uh, some hindsight in how important those actually are uh, from, from uh, the other room where, where the, the, the protagonist, I guess, spends most of their time. Uh, és a másik előképpen, vagy a másik uh, film, ami ilyen strukturális szempontból nagyon fontos volt nekem, az a, a, a Cleo 5-től 7-ig című film. So the other one was Cleo? Cleo 5-től 7-ig. Uh, from 5 to 7, uh -huh, from 5 to 7. Uh -huh. uh, ahol ugye uh, valaki egy orvosi diagnózisra vár, uh, és közben látjuk, hogy hogy telik az idő. Tehát, hogy semmi nincs a film. Tehát nem tudjuk meg, hogy ő halálos betege vagy sem, csak azt látjuk, hogy, hogy ő erre vár, erre a diagnózisra, és közben telik a nap. So the film itself um, also helped with the structure as far as uh, the idea of witnessing, you know, the patient who's sitting there waiting for the diagnosis and you don't know whether it's a serious case, whether it's not a serious case and, and, and uh, very little action actually. Igen, tehát, hogy a, hogy a, a hétköz, tehát, hogy kalaposboltban van, zo, ö, énekórát vesz, ö, taxival utazik, tehát semmit nem láttunk, ami igazán 
érdekli őt, vagy ami foglalkoztatja őt, hanem egy teljesen hétköznapi napot látunk. So you see, you see an actual representation of an everyday life. So whether they're in a hat shop or a taxi scene or uh, just everyday activities. And, and, and this is, uh, was it also, a, uh, as far as structure is concerned, something that was uh, important to Joffé. Igen, de hogy közben a háttérben zajlik valami. Tehát, hogy azért tudjuk nézni mind a két filmet, mert a háttérben, ö, ö, tehát, hogy mi is arra gondolunk, amire a szereplő gondolhat, hogy mi fog vele történni. Vagy mi az, ami a háttérben mozog. So what's going on in the background is simultaneously going through the main character's uh, mind and therefore through the viewer's mind as well. So this is, these, these are very important to the feature. So valahogy én valahogy azt gondoltam, hogy muszáj, hogy a háttérben legyen egy történet, amiből lehet, hogy keveset érzékelünk, de kell ahhoz, hogy én ezekről a nagyon hétköznapi dolgokról tudjak mesélni. Ha ez nincs ott, akkor szétesik az egész. Én legalábbis én ettől tartottam. So she was worried that everything would fall apart had there not been a background story. So for her it was very important that all of that background, um, what was going on, what, 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 what what uh, was shown was more so done through everyday routine act, uh, yeah, activities, I guess. De, de az is mindig tett, hogy én, nagy, én valahogy nagyon szerettem volna, hogy ez egy ilyen nagyon minimalista történet, ami a háttérben zajlik, tehát hogy nem tolakodik az előtérben, de azért, de azért még így kitapintható, tehát hogy mindig, mindig visszatérünk rá, pici dolog, de cserébe tudjuk nézni, hogy mi van az előtérben, mi a hétköznap. So the background story itself still very important, but in a minimalistic way, so shown in a very minimalistic way, and therefore um, it, it, it uh, remained uh, it, it remained there, um, just not in, in such an obvious way, perhaps. <clears throat> poked through from time to time. You might see it coming in and out just a little bit. And it was reoccurring. I guess that was something that I left out as well. Thank you, Carol. That was a good point. And <laughs> it reminded me, she also said that it brought the story back again and again, the background story. So. De azért érdekes ez a kérdés, mert tulajdonképpen én nagyon szerettem volna elhagyni ezt az egész történetet. Tehát, hogy, hogy engem nagyon érdekelne az, hogy tényleg mi az a minimum, vagy a, tényleg a, a határa annak, a, amikor a lehető legminimálisabb történet van, és mégis megmarad egy film egyben, de nem mertem megtenni, hogy ezt, hogy ezt kihagyom. So I guess she would have liked to have left out the whole uh, background story if possible and just kept it as bare minimum as possible, but she didn't dare do that. So she had to keep some elements of that there. But this was something that she was uh, playing with in the, in the film. Listen, I'm, I, thank you. That's, um, it, it does do exactly what you were thinking and um, it does provide that, that minimum of structure to um, to kind of endure this this day that this this woman is enduring things. I think Sasha, you wanted to go next. Yeah, I wanted to follow up. Um, I, I'll I'll also say congratulations. I really enjoyed the film. I think it's wonderfully done. Um, and um, I I like that you in a terms of form. You mentioned these two Belgian directors and especially Agnes Vargas, right? Um, Clear, uh, clear from five to seven that I, I think it's a, it's a great analogy in the terms of structure. Um, my question is more maybe related to, to the, the content. Uh, and um, one, one of the critics said that uh, your film is about the heroism of an ordinary women's, woman's or ordinary day. Um, and I'm interested besides these two films that you mentioned that are uh, formal inspiration for your uh, one day, um, are there any other cinematic texts that uh, served as a models to approach this topic? Uh, and if so, how much um, uh, is it, it was important for you that the directors of these films uh, were maybe women? <clears throat> Az az igazság, hogy engem általában formai kérdések indítanak el, tehát nem, nem a tartalmiak elsősorban. So um, she's saying that it's the structure itself that 
that gets her going more so than the actual content when it comes to film. So. És ezért tulajdonképpen magához a témához nem is nagyon tudok mondani ö, ilyen előképet filmnek, de a, az egész román új hullám és annak a realizmusa az, ö, az engem nagyon megfogott, vagy az, az nagy, szerintem nagyon fontos, ö, tehát ez a fajta mikro történetekben gondolkodó realizmus, amit a román új hullám csinál, hogy ilyen, ilyen mikro történetekben mesél a társadalomról, ö, e, ezt én imádom, tehát valahogy biztos, hogy benne volt a, a pakliban, amikor erről a filmről gondolkodtam, hogy én egy ilyen, ilyesmi filmet akarok csinálni, mint a románok. <laughs> so, uh, another, another point uh, that she made was uh, about the Romanian New Wave and how those micro stories about society are are put out there and and again this very uh, minimalistic uh, format is something that she you, you, I mean obviously uh, made a great influence on her and uh, her her view in film. De tulajdonképpen azt megfigyeltem magamon, hogy nem, hogy valahogy sokszor könyvekben is, de mostanában filmekben is, hogy nem úgy keresek, hogy a női szerzők műveit nézem, de az, ami igazán megtetszik, arról utóbb kiderül, hogy egy nő csinálta. Tehát van egy ilyen fordított mechanizmus, de ez mostanában van, nem a film előtt történt, vagy akkor szerintem még nem, nem volt ennyire éles ez az érdeklődésem. So many times in literature as well as in film, when when she reads about something or she she mm, partakes in in these art forms, that it, it it ends up that way that it happens to be a woman who wrote or directed the material. So it's not necessarily uh, it's like a backwards kind of mechanism, is what she's saying. So it's not that she consciously goes for those uh, those uh, genres or those pieces. It just kind of happens that way. Tehát, hogy, hogy legutóbb valahogy a Claire Dönének a munkáiba ö, bo, ö, kezdtem nézni az ő filmjeit, illetve hát a, a Greta Görvingnek a, nem tudom, hogy jól mondom a nevét, de hát, hogy ez is valahogy egyszerűen fantasztikus, ahogy nála ö, nem csak a kisasszonyokban, hanem ugye a Francis Hában, amiben ő maga is szerepel, tehát hogy valahogy amilyenek ezek a női alapok, amilyen elevenek, ö, az szerintem egész fantasztikus. Tehát, hogy valamit mégiscsak tudnak a nők szerintem, <gül> amit másképp csinálnak, mint a férfiak. Ez nem, nem tudnám megtudni, hogy mi ez, de, de úgy nagyon pontosan é- é- észlelem. So she can't actually say exactly what it is that women do differently, but there's something about <laughs> women in art that just, it, 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 it just makes sense to her. So um, she gave a couple of examples. So Claire Denis and Gerida Bergman and um, just Little Women, for example, and all of these, in all of these cases, um, give uh, or portray um, just women in a, in a different light, that's all. And she, she senses that. Yeah, thank you. I think that that sensibility definitely comes across. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, I'm glad that you uh, find form to be very important because my next question is, is one about form. It, it seemed uh, both to me and to Sasha, we had a, conver- a, a small conversation about this earlier, that one of the most important things um, seems to be perspective. Uh, and it, it looks like a lot of the film was shot with a handheld camera, or at least something that is shaking a lot and, and gives the impression of being a handheld camera. And this camera follows Anna around in her apartment, her car, at her work, in a cafe, in the bus, in the kindergarten, everywhere. And it's in all these different places, but it, it always seems to be uh, staying in what you might call the zone of her character. Uh, can you say a little bit more about uh, the effects that you wanted uh, to create with this camera work? and the role of perspective in, in the way you tell the story? Mm, azt valahogy, amíg a forgatókönyvírásnál eldöntöttem, hogy ezt a történetet ennek a nőnek a szemszögéből fogom elmesélni. So it was sure when she was already writing the script that she wanted to um, do it through uh, Anna's, the main character's perspective. Tehát ez nem egy párhuzamos történet lesz, nem a, a férfinek és a nőnek a története, hanem ez ebből a nézőpontból fogom bemutatni ezt a helyzetet. 
she didn't want to do it th uh, through both characters. So it was for sure from the beginning, from the get-go, that it was going to be, you know, just from uh, the woman's perspective. Uh, én valahogy, azt hiszem, hogy azért is döntöttem emellett, mert én valahogy annyira, én nem tudom, én azt hiszem, hogy én vonzódom a korlátozott nézőponthoz. Tehát ahhoz, hogy egyszerűen nem tudunk mindent, hogy egy csomó mindent sejtünk, de nem látunk rá dolgokra, nem tudjuk mi jár a másik fejében, hanem így valahogy be vagyunk zárva egy kicsit így a saját nézőpontunkba, és ebből nincs, ebből nincs kiárás, vagy csak nagyon ritka alkalmaknál talán. So one of the reasons is that she seems to be attracted somehow to restricted views or points of view. So in her in her mind, it was obvious from the beginning, and she didn't want to explore uh, all the different areas, whether you know um, uh, the different characters or whatnot. She she it was a conscious effort on her behalf to to stay true to uh, the uh, Anna's uh, point of view. She didn't want to move around uh, and try to maneuver through that. Tehát, hogy az volt a koncepciónk, hogy, a, hogy az Annával, vagy a főszereplővel vagyunk, tehát, hogy közel vagyunk hozzá valóban, az esetek legnagyobb részében, de vannak a filmben pontok, kettő, amikor tulajdonképpen benne vagyunk, tehát, hogy nem közel vagyunk hozzá, hanem pontosan azt látjuk, amit ő lát, amikor azt a falat látja a, a kocsiból kifelé, tehát, hogy amikor igazán megüti őt valami, akkor van, egy, van egy, ilyen, egy ilyen láthatatlan határ, amit átlép a kamera, hogy nem vele vagyunk, hanem benne. So, um, yeah, the conception was definitely, the concept, I'm sorry, was to definitely remain very close to the character. And uh, there are several points, actually two, uh, to be exact. When you, it's not just so much as uh, being as close as possible, but actually perhaps seeing what she sees. And one of those examples that she mentions was, the scene from the car when she's uh, looking out and there's the, the, the flash of the wall, for example. That's a, an example of that. És hogy ennek, tehát hogy ez bizonyos dramaturgiai pontokon vannak, tehát hogy amikor ő, ő igazán szembesül azzal, hogy itt valami nagy baj van, akkor vannak ezek a képek, illetve van egy másik fajta a kamera, amikor vagy kiugrunk a történetből, és, és néhány totál erejéig a távolból látjuk ezt a nőt. Tehát, hogy van, van egy, ilyen, egy ilyen messzi nézőpontunk is, ez egyrészt azért választottuk, azt hiszem, hogy adjunk a, a nézőnek egy kis lehetőséget arra, hogy levegőhöz jusson, tehát, hogy így, hogy így me megpihenjen, de, de valahogy azért is, mert... Öm, mert valahogy engem mindig olyan szívszorító, hogy amikor ismerek valakit jól, és egyszer csak távolról látom az utcán, akkor valahogy úgy, nem tudom, így érzelmileg valami mást kelt a nézőben, vagy meg lehet sajnálni valakit igazából, mint, mint egy embert, aki kívül van, hogyha nem vagyunk hozzá ennyire közel. Szóval hogy van a nézőre, egy, a szeretem van a nézőre, tulajdonképpen egy ilyen érzelmi hatást is gyakorolni, azzal bizonyos pontokon ki, kiugrunk, és látjuk őt a távolból. So um, just as far as uh, dramaturg work is concerned, so she realizes, um, so when, when, you're, when, you, when there's a very, very close up uh, aspect, um, it's, it's obviously uh, you're kind of going that much closer. So she even realizes, so the protagonist realizes how bad the problem or how severe, how grave the problem is in that moment. And then there's that other one when um, there's like an invisible kind of, uh, uh, some kind of a border-like uh, effect where uh, you take a step back and you can see her or the scene from further away. So it gives the viewer kind of a chance to catch their breath and kind of um, take, take a minute to kind of absorb everything that's been happening up until that point. So that was one, one of the reasons uh, that she chose this uh, option. And the other one was um, but she always likes to uh, see things like, for example, if you were to bump into someone on the street and they're on the other side, but you don't approach them, you just kind of um, take a minute to notice them in that space, you kind of um, emotionally have a different reaction to them than you would if you would go up to them and, and talk to them or something like this. So I think that was it. So the emotional, the emotional, the, the difference between uh, the emotional state that you get from being up close and being one step back. 
egyszerűen könnyebben megsajnál az ember valakit, aki picit messzebb van, mint hogyha nagyon közel vagy egy nézőpont. Az ott nincs helye az önsajnálatnak, vagy a rálátásnak. És én szerettem volna, hogyha ha néző valahogy egy pillanatra így meg tudja pillanatni távolról is ezt a nőt, és nem csak mindig ilyen nagyon közel van. So just to kind of, um, again, uh, that one step back or from the other side, you, 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 you can really kind of emotionally um, feel a little bit, um, you can feel more for that person or you can kind of feel perhaps badly even about uh, the situation from afar. So just that, that uh, effect is what uh, she was zoning in for. Carol, did you want to uh, add another question? Yes. Um, you're talking about, you were just talking about having more sympathy for the person when you have, um, oh, I'm, oops. when you look at them from a, a different point of view or farther away. And you also made the point, and I thought this was a fascinating point, uh, in your in your interview at Khan that um, that if you had made a documentary film, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have felt the same sympathy for her. At, at, and you wanted this film to be fiction, so so that uh, the audience could engage with her, uh, I guess, more openly. And and I think that's fascinating and and very correct. And I'm wondering if you could talk about that a little bit. Ez, ez szerintem a, a, a kérdés érdekesebb, mint amit én gondoltam. <laughs> so she thinks perhaps the question is even more interesting than what she was thinking about what she was... <laughs> De ez egy iszonyú érdekes kérdés, hogy vajon tényleg az, hogyha valami dokumentumfilm vagy fikció, az mennyiben változtatja meg egy, egy, egy teljesen ugyanahoz, vagy ugyanahoz a szereplőhöz való viszonyunkat, so the relationship that we have with uh, characters, so whether it's a documentary or whether it's a, a fictional account, like the way we, we, um, the way we relate to the characters, completely different. De én egyszerűen attól tartottam, és ez lehet, hogy ilyen ilyen gyávaság a részemből, hogy hogyha ez egy eredetileg egy dokumentumfilmet terveztem erről forgatni, de hogy attól féltem, hogyha, hogyha ez a nő igazából megmeri mutatni azt, hogy ő a gyerekeivel szemben türelmetlen, vagy rossz kedve van, vagy nincs kedve ö, bármit, nem tudom, hogy a gyerekeivel játszani, akkor egyszerűen el fogják őt ítélni, őt személy szerint. She didn't want people to, to judge uh, the protagonist, and this was uh, basically why she chose to do it this way. She was, she, it's kind of, um, uh, perhaps, perhaps she wanted to protect her somehow, and this was a way that uh, she could do that. She could attempt to do that through uh, not, you know, the way that she talks to her children perhaps could have uh, bothered some people, some viewers, or perhaps the way that she interacts with um her, her family sometimes, I mean, showing, showing these everyday, very uh, real situations could have um, perhaps had some negative uh, feedback had it not been done this way. I think that's absolutely fascinating because I think about that, what, you, what you're saying, and, and I think it's so true. I mean, I think about myself, if this film had been a documentary film, would I have wanted to fix her or tell her, well, you shouldn't have had all those children or would I have tried to, you know, impose my own values on her? Whereas when this is a fictional film, I can, I can suffer her. I can, I can suffer her day. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Ha fikcióban nézzük ugyanezt, akkor valahogy hátra lehet dölni, hogy ez, ez csak egy film, nem? És nincs, nincs ez a kényszer, hogy meg kell ítélni, hogy most jó anya, vagy nem jó anya. És én nem akartam ebbe a döntéshelyzetbe sodorni a nézőket. És a szereplőt meg pláne nem, hogy utána ő neki a szomszédaival kelljen beszélgetni arról, hogy ő hogy neveli a gyerekeit, vagy bárkivel az utcán. So that was definitely uh, part of the, the, the concept was just not to have uh, the protagonist uh, 
again, be judged and whatnot. And and I guess, Carol, she mentioned that um, the question in itself, I mean, just the, the way that you felt about uh, the character was definitely um, um, uh, the way that she wanted uh the viewer to portray her because that's the whole point i guess that you if it's a fi you know if it's a fictive tale you sit back and enjoy what you see versus if it had been a documentary you might have had negative feelings or the neighbors would have had negative feelings or uh, people in her surroundings would have had a different maybe a judgmental uh, take on her thank you Oh, yeah, and I'm I, sorry, I think um, I'm sorry. Safa wanted to follow up next. Go, go ahead, Carol, please. No, I was just turning it over to you, Sasha. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel that the form, the way, the way that the, the film was executed is um, allowing viewers to identify and to be really close to this character. I think that that effect is, is just amazing how it works. Um, but talking to Chris, we, we were both actually intrigued by this um, repeated motif of um, Simone, who is Anna's oldest child. Um, we in, in film, he very often describes this uh, favorite game, video game that he has. Um, and uh, Chris mentioned that um, there is interesting reference to this uh, Eisensteinian physics and the idea that the passenger traveling in a spaceship at a high speed will not age as fast as a person who remain on a planet. Um, while I was also uh, struck by the, uh, Simone's complaint that the computer that they have at home is actually too slow and outdated to, to run the video game. Um, so these statements that Simone is making, um, it seems that they both address metaphorically Anna's anxieties about her marriage and then her life. Um, could you say a little bit more about the sources of Simon's video games monologues and how you actually intended for them to resonate with the, with the film's larger themes? Well, I really liked this question, that it was a problem with you. I Nem, nem tudom, hogy, hogy nem tudom, hogy önök játszanak a videójátékokat. She really enjoyed the question, so I think of all <laughs> the fact that uh, you both were so uh, curious about all of these things. So the first question she has for you is, do you guys play video games? <laughs> There's so much empathy on your behalf. I just thought that there are two players who are very aware that if they don't work with a computer screen, then why is it a big deal if the person is video game? Here are two, two gentlemen who, who understand what, you know, what the feelings that someone would have if you know, the computer just doesn't work. Or the... <laughs> De, de való, valóban a, a, a háttere, egész egyszerűen ezt loptam, tehát hogy a, a, én vigyáztam az unokatesómnak a gyerekeire, és ő neki a legnagyobb fia rá volt kattanva erre a Spor nevű videójátékra, és teljesen ugyanaz történik a filmben, mint amit ő csinált. Tehát egy az egyben le lehetett írni azt, amit ő mond. So she basically stole this from her cousin's uh, child who uh, just was completely just into this game and word for word, I mean, these were the words that uh, were used at home and she just, you know, completely just stole from life experience, basically. És a helyzete is ugyanez volt, hogy, hogy, hogy bármit, amit se Simon mond, arra soha senki nem figyel oda, olyan, mint egy ilyen zaj a lakásban, az egyik zaj a, nem tudom, a mosogatógép mellett, a, a Simon is mindig ismétli ezeket a dolgokat. So the fact that Simon is constantly talking about these, everyone, it's, it's like a background noise, like no one really pays attention to him, it just keeps going and going on, and he tells everyone, but it's just constant, and no one really pays attention to him. És ez valahogy nem világos, hogy, hogy szegény Simon azért mondja el ezt ennyiszer, mert soha senki nem figyel rá, vagy azért nem figyel rá senki, mert tényleg mindig erről beszél. So you can't, you can't decide if, you know, poor thing, he's just, you know, he goes on and on, and is he just going on and on because 
nobody really addresses his needs or is it going on and on just because he really seriously always goes on and on about the topic so de de azt valahogy én szerettem volna hogyha hogy tulajdonképpen én is azt gondoltam vagy azért is örültem ennek a kérdésnek hogy a hogy a az Anna házasságára, vagy a problémájára, ami neki valahogy igazából az idővel van valami komoly baja. Tehát, hogy az, hogy, hogy minden, minden perce be van osztva, te a, tehát, hogy ez a fajta beszorított idő, amiben ő él, erre a válasz valójában a Simonnál van. So the answer is... Sorry. So the answer, the answer to her question, so the protagonist, so Anna's, Anna's constant fight with time and time in general and always being there as, as a constant uh, reminder in the film of how, um, how pushed for time the situation is and whatnot, the, the key itself is with Simon. So the key, the key itself to the, to the problem is there. Tehát egy, egyrészt, amikről mesél, hogy olyan jó lenne elmenni egy világba, egy, egy másik világba, ahol másképp múlik az idő, tehát hogy ő is erről álmodik, tehát erről, egyrészt erről beszél, amikor a videójátékokról beszél, vagy ez érdekli, hogy hogy lehetne kikerülni ebből a, az időcsávából, amiből, amiben mi vagyunk. So uh, the fact that he, he himself dreams of going to a faraway land that has no time and time is completely, um, it's, it, it just uh, affects us differently. I mean, that's, that's it, isn't it? So just, just the fact that he also would like to go there and experience that. Másrészt az, ahogy ő maga kezeli az időt, tehát, hogy ő, ő mindig ott felejti magát valahol. Tehát, hogy, hogy, ő, hogy ő tényleg elmerül dolgokban, és ott az idő, amikor ő olvas, meg játszogat, meg mindent elfelejt, akkor ott végtelen. Ugye, amikor az ember elmerül valamiben, akkor az idő olyan tágassá válik, és, és valahogy, tehát, hogy a Simon egy ilyen ellenpontja igazából ilyen szempontból az Annának, és ahogy az Anna pörög, és semmiben nem tud így bele so the fact that he you know he'll start playing and he'll get lost in his in his in his little games that he's playing or the fact you know he forgets everything because he's constantly in in a different time zone i guess we could say and the fact that this occurs uh is a counterpoint with anna's character so so yeah this was uh time time here being endless was definitely uh an important an important factor in the film mm -hmm. És valahogy yeah. arról, arról sokat gondolkoztunk, hogy tulajdonképpen milyen szomorú, hogy a gyereknevelés az azt jelenti, vagy azt is jelenti, hogy valakit ebből az időből, ebből az elmerült időkből átnevelünk egy ilyen egy, egy ilyen időre, és hogy ez igazából ez meg, megéri ez a fajta nevelés, vagy nem, hogy így toljuk bele a simont ebbe az életbe, nem tudom, hogy ez ilyen szomorú, egy szomorú valahol. So the fact that the fact that we rear children this way, that, you know, time, time, time and, you know, pushing for time and, and turning someone from this dreamer, from this constant, uh, you know, having a having a different time schedule period and to raise him to be someone who does, you know, is that what we really want? Is it worth it? Is this is this really what what we want to do with our children? So this was another point that she just made. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I, I really like how this inability to being in a present is accomplished and, and, and uh, portrayed. Thank you. So uh, another question kind of about the emotional uh, uh, content of the film and sort of the, the impact it has. Uh, you know, it's it's very emotionally powerful, and I think part of that is because of the way that you know we identify. You, you, you're so successful in getting the viewer to identify with with your protagonist. But I think part of it too is is how sort of understated uh, the emotional intensity is. You know, Anna is experiencing so much anxiety, clearly, and frustration, and pain, and sometimes anger. But there's so little, you know, uh, shouting or crying. Uh, she and also her husband are, are quite stoic in their reactions. And probably this is partly uh, because they're trying not to upset the children. That's a, a natural kind of parenting technique to try and keep a lid on things so the children are not hurt. But they also seem to be very emotionally reserved, uh, even when there are no children present. 
So I was just wondering if, if you thought that this kind of stoicism in, in your main characters, uh, was that a kind of specific uh, personality trait of Anna and, and Saboc? Or is it possible that this is um, a kind of more widespread uh, behavioral model that, that is typical maybe in Hungary? I, I, I don't know. A magyar az egy rendkívül nyomasztó nép, szerintem. How do I translate that? So, uh, the Hungarian, uh, well, maybe Carol can help, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How can I be PC about this comment? <laughs> we have academic freedom, you don't have to be politically correct. Oh, good, oh, good. So, oh, it's yeah. A, a depressing people, overwhelmingly so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Szóval, hogy, hogy ez, a, ez a folytottság, de ezt Miriam, te jobban tudod, mert... Tudom, tudom, tudom. I was just trying to involve everyone in the conversation. <laughs> de te tudod ezt a legjobban, hiszen te nem itt nőttél föl, nem? I know, I know. It's totally true. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it is, it is kind of like being in a pressure cooker. I mean, honestly, constantly, because uh, not being from here, and this is why she said I, I should know this the best, that it is, it, it is, it is quite uh, difficult that you kind of have to keep everything within and, you know, portray that everything's all right on the outside and everything's fine, right? But I guess uh, there's another point you wanted to make. That's true. That's true. So things things uh, aren't sorry, I, I added that comment that I'll take that one. I'll protect on my comment that people try to show that everything's okay on the outside. They don't, they don't show it. And, and that's why it's so depressing, I guess, from an outside eye. And or I mean it kind of is in that way, in that sense. Szóval biztos van ennek egy ilyen kulturális, tehát az érzelemkezelésnek is van egy ilyen kulturális sajátossága, ez, ez biztos, hogy így van, de én szerintem ez következik másrészt a, a szituációból is, tehát hogyha az emberek bizalmatlanok egymással szemben, tehát egy házasságban éppen úgy vannak a dolgok, hogy így nem lehet tudni, hogy hányadán állsz a másikkal, akkor szerintem mondjuk ritkán vagy nagyon felszabadult, tehát hogy az eleve, okoz szerintem egy ilyen távolságtartás, vagy okozhat. Um. So, uh, the way people deal with feelings definitely is cultural. So that was the first point that she made. And uh, the second one, um, can, you, can, can you repeat the second one, Jofi? Sorry. Tehát, hogyha, hogyha egy házasságban bizalmatlanság van éppen, vagy gyanú, akkor nem valószínű, hogy az ember állati felszabadult ö, éppen, vagy így csacsog. Tehát, hogy én nem tudom képzelni, hogy, hogy az ab, akkor is van egy ilyen feszültség, ami akadályozza a, az érzelmeket, vagy egy ilyen gyanakvás, hogy most hányadán állunk. So, and in a, in a relationship in itself, so if there's these kinds of insecurities or this kind of uh, uh, situation, so I guess, yeah, just the infinite the, the in self and, and knowing that, you know, there is this, this situation, obviously you're not going to be able to just sit down and chat and pretend like everything's okay. So this, this, This definitely is the other side of the coin. És, és ami még szerintem fontos, talán két dolog. Az egyik az az, hogy, hogy egyszerűen ez egy döntés kérdése is, hogy én egy ilyen fegyelmezett karaktert választottam, tehát aki nem engedi ki az érzéseit, ennek egyszerűen dramaturgiai oka is van. Tehát, hogyha ha egy karakter elkezd kiabálni és kiengedi az érzelmeket, akkor valószínűleg a, a film is utána a feszültség így lecsökken. Ha én akarom tartani ezt a feszültséget, akkor egy olyan embert kell választanom, akin látom, hogy tartja magát. Tehát egy olyan alkat, aki nem engedi ki a gőzt. So as far as the dramaturg was concerned in the film, so the fact that the character in itself is a very strict and very stoic and whatnot, and she constantly is trying to keep it together also has the effect on the film to where if she had released or screamed or done anything to where she would release that then the film would lose some of its intensity as well és talán még az utolsó hogy szerintem hogy hogy amikor a a felnőttek a gyerekeikre való tekintettel visszafolytják az érzelmeiket vagy lesz egyben lesz ebben egy gyakorlatuk akkor az utána nem megy így az érzelem kiengedés. Szóval ha ez valaki hozzá szokik, hogy a gyerekei miatt ő nem engedi el magát, vagy nem enged ki bizonyos érzelmeket, akkor utána, 
hogy az érzelem egy érzékeny állat szerintem, az nem, az utána nem biztos, hogy megjelenik, hanem lehet, hogy elbújik, vagy, vagy tehát, hogy nem olyan egyszerű utána az érzelmeket prezentálni, ha ahhoz vagy szokva, hogy azokat le kell folytani, vagy a gyerekeidet miatt egyszerűen nem engedhetsz meg magadnak egy csomó mindent. So being, so as a parent, for example, and uh, constantly having to internalize your feelings, your your true feelings and the way you would normally want to react, you can't because you're constantly trying to keep it together and 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 not uh, not release that. And, uh, and emotions in general, like if you are constantly internalizing it and not, you know, not letting those out after a while it might be difficult to 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 be able to touch on those again so just the 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 whole the whole the whole point of constantly keeping those hidden and 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 pushed all the way down there's there's no there's no uh there would be no 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 easy way of going back and being able to express those after so so much time i guess thank you um Maybe uh, uh, we, there's a bunch of other questions we have. We clearly won't have time for them all, but maybe um, it's a good time to turn towards uh, the question of performances in the film. Uh, and we have to start, of course, uh, um, you know, with your uh, leading lady there, um, uh, Jofia uh, Samoshi, whose performance is really amazing. It's, it's completely convincing, at least it was to me. I, I never had a moment where I was thinking about her as an actress. I was just thinking about her as Anna. Um, and so I was wondering, did, did you have her in mind early on to play this role? And, and if not, uh, did, when, how, er, how soon did you know that she was going to uh, be playing this role? And, and did she bring anything to the role that you had not uh, originally uh, had in mind? No, she wasn't actually uh, on um, Jofi's mind when she was writing the screenplay. Hmm. Once everybody else, uh, all the other characters had been filled, that's when she, if, if I understood correctly, is when she came to mind. Yo, in Hungary, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then I, I misunderstood that point. So when, yeah, there was nobody else that she could really choose from. So people. Magyarország nem egy nagy ország, tehát azért így át lehet tekinteni a 40-es színésznőket. Egyszerűen már nem volt több. <laughs> so we don't, there isn't, there isn't such a plethora of, of actors in Hungary is a small country. So, I mean, the choice was, uh, you know, for 40, somebody in their, her 40s who could, you know, do the role. It was basically her, so. És akkor az Enyed Ildikó nézte ezt a folyamatot, és egy ponton fölhívott, hogy miért nem nézem meg a Szamosi Zsófiát, aki nekem egész egyszerűen, de nem jutott eszembe. So it was actually uh, Ildiko Anyedi who suggested that she has a look at her because um, she hadn't, uh, so Szilágyi Zsófi, Zsófi hadn't, uh, hadn't uh, thought of her beforehand, and so that's when she started to think about it. Uh, és az, amit talán hozzátett, um, a, hogy valahogy én egy, um, hogy tulajdonképpen ő még fegyelmezett, tehát hogy én, én egy, egy ilyen meleg szívű nőt szerettem volna, uh, és ezt a Zsófi szerintem meg is csinálja, uh, talán egyel még fegyelmezettebb vette ő a karaktert, mint amit én eredetileg uh, képzeltem. So as far as what she added to the character, so um, Jeffy saying that she definitely wanted somebody who was warm hearted and could portray that as well as being as strict as a character as she was. And perhaps in this sense, uh, Jeffy Samoshi put one more uh, level to that strictness. So, yeah, or this. De, de én, ezt, én ezt kedveltem, hogy ő, hogy ő ezen a módon csinálja, vagy formálja meg ezt a karaktert. But she she enjoyed the way she played her and and this extra element that she added to it. Uh, we had a am I on? Yeah. Uh, so we had a, a question from the audience uh, uh, that I, I was going to ask either Carol or Miriam to help read the beginning of because it's in Hungarian. Uh, can can one of you pull up that the Q and A and and uh, read that for us? Carol, would you like to do the honors? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
Nagyon szép film. Sírtam, sírtam a végén. Pont jó. I started out this session as the rest is in English. So can you can you gloss the Hungarian for, for those of us? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, it's a beautiful film and I was crying at the end. It's just right. It's just exactly right. Okay. Uh, well, and while you're there, Carol, do you want to read the rest of the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, oh, I just lost it. Oh, here we go. Uh, so I started out this session in the kitchen, finishing the dishes and laundry with child running around, which seems appropriate. How did you get the children to act in the film? Or were they simply being themselves and the film worked around them? Of course, you cannot not mention the film. The children in this film, they were amazing. Próbáltunk a gyerekekkel sokat, megtanulták a szöveget. Nyilván nem a Márkó, tehát nem a legkisebb. Tehát, hogy tulajdonképpen nem önmagukat játszák, de ők erre készültek erre a szerepre. Of course, the children do play themselves, but um, they did rehearse quite a lot, uh, except with the exception of Marco, the little one. So they did they did work with the children quite a bit. És egyszerűen valahogy az történt, hogy hogy nagyon nagy szerencsénk volt szerintem a választással, mert a gyerekek nagyon egymásra találtak, és nagyon nagyon szerették egymás társaságát, és élveztek ott lenni. És mindig kérdezték, hogy jön-e a másik. <laughs> és, és valahogy e, ettől az ő felszabadultságuk az valahogy úgy, úgy meg, megmaradt a filmben attól, hogy ők élvezt, élvezték ezt a folyamatot. So the children generally enjoyed each other's company, so that was uh, that gave that kind of uh, a feel to to their characters as well. So uh, they were always really happy to show up, and they would always ask, "Is the other one coming?" So that they could, you know, they, it was like having fun together um, on the set. So they really enjoyed each other's company. Meg az, hogy, hogy egy, egy forgatáson mindig a gyerekek a királyok, tehát hogy minden körülök, és egy idő után iszonyúan elkapatják magukat, ez nagyon vicces. So children are generally pretty funny on the set. I mean, they just, they love, they're the, they're the kings, can I say that? They're just the coolest on the set, so they get all this attention and they just love the atmosphere. És, és egy ponton kitiltották a szüleiket, tehát hogy, tehát, hogy, tehát, hogy nem jöhettek, mert, mert nem. And the kids actually forbade their parents of showing up on the set, so they wanted to be there by themselves with no, you know, nobody there telling them how to behave and what to do and what not. So, yeah. If I can follow up, it, it almost seems that if these kids would have an opportunity to be more on the films, that would maybe help the marriage of Anna and Shabolchi. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, I, I more encourage our audience to submit further questions. Uh, uh, that was a good one, certainly. If you have any others, please send them to the Q&A or, or the chat function in YouTube. Uh, but I'll turn it over to uh, Sasha, Carol, if there was a, a question of yours we didn't get to yet that you'd like to bring in at this time. Uh, yes, if I may, I was going to ask a little bit about the music choices. So um, you were mentioning how uh, the sound of Shimon is just an ongoing noise at the same way that the washing machine is an, uh, or the dishwasher is an ongoing noise. And um, there's a lot of Budapest sound in this film. You, the, the sounds from the outside are just, are just constant and realistic and, and very much a part of the, the general din of her day. Um, when she's in the car, though, she takes at one time when she's alone, she's listening to Tchaikovsky and starts to cry. And, and then she quickly turns it to some rock and roll. And, and uh, I feel like uh, in a way we're not allowed to see her inner world. We're not allowed to see what she's thinking right now. And is it the music that's turning it off or is the music turning us off or how does that work? Én szerintem az Anna nagyon szeretne egész nap egy kicsit csöndbe lenni, de nem akkor ott éjjel. So she, she has a feeling that Anna would rather um, spend uh, any time that she has to herself in complete silence and like uh, be able to just be, except for at night. 
Szóval, hogy szerintem van a, van a fáradtságnak, meg a csalódottságnak egy olyan szintje, amikor az ember nem akar csendben lenni, mert az valahogy olyan elviselhetetlennek tűnik, vagy az, hogy ezek a, ezek a zenék így valamit így ellen, tehát, hogy különösen ez a rock, amit azt szerint elberek, hogy akkor ordítson valami. Szóval, hogyha már ő nem ordít, akkor már legalább valami ordítson. So there's, a, there's that point where um, if, if, if all the disappointments of her life or all of those situations that, that keep her in the state that she's in are constantly on her, there's that point where quiet would be unbearable. So that's why maybe there's that twist of the very harsh or the, the, the more rock, rock or punk or just a uh, stronger uh, counterbalance music that was uh, added to the, to the score. So that's uh, the reason for that. Uh, és egyébként még az időmúlást jelzik ezek a zenék, tehát hogy ő úton van, és ahogy változik, tehát nem ő kapcsolgatja elvileg, hanem ez egy rádió, amiben mennek a, a számok, és az, hogy, hogy legalábbis ezt szerettük volna, de lehet, hogy akkor ez nem volt, nem jött át, vagy nem így érthető, hogy nem ő kapcsolgat, hanem múlik az idő. Tehát ő megy a városban, szól a rádió, és mindig valami más szól. So the music itself, it's not that she's putting different songs in or she's, it's her choice by any means. It's the radio. So the, what Jeffrey was trying to, um, to get out of this was this passing of time effect with the music coming and going and different songs coming on and off and just like uh, different, different, different songs that you might hear on the radio. És ezekben végére, amikor a körforgalomba kerül, akkor, akkor ő csendben marad. Tehát ő végül is megérkezik ebbe a csendbe, amikor ott köröz a körforgalomba, csak az egy pont, amikor ő oda megérkezik abba. És az is tulajdonképpen egy ilyen körbejárás, egy ilyen úttalan, vagy ilyen kiúttalan, nem tudom milyen helyzet. So there's that point um, when she, um, towards the end, when she gets to the roundabout and everything quiets down again and she's just going around and around and around and things are kind of settling back down to that original point that she had taken off from, I guess. Yeah, it seems that the, the way that you edited film works a lot, almost like a music composition with mm -hmm contrasts with this counterbalancing balancing the emotions that she's in or like silence and noise um, uh, but there is a, also something in the film that um, leaves viewers kind of um, to to like a like a cliffer <laughs> like a, they don't they're, they're ambivalent about and that is um, um, Anna's husband's uh, uh, infidelity So we are not sure whether he slept with her friend or not, whether he ended that relationship or not. Uh, will he be faithful to Anna in the future or not? Um, and was this open-endedness um, intended for your audience? Um, so can you kind of reflect on it? What, what, what we as viewers um, should infer from, from such open-endedness or... What was your intention? De szerintem nem tudjuk, hogy mi lesz ezzel a házassággal. Tehát ilyen értelemben nyitva marad. Tehát ők elválnak, nem válnak el, mi, mi fog történni, azt nem tudjuk. De ezen a ponton szerintem ezt nem is lehet tudni. So the question of whether they remain together or they don't remain quite, uh, together is, is, is open to the viewers. So we, don't, we really don't know um, what, what is going to happen at this point. Viszont szerintem az, hogy azt nem tudjuk, hogy megcsalta -e a férje vagy sem, de az, hogy nem jött haza, én szerintem, tehát hogy az egy olyan erős gesztus ebben a helyzetben, hogy a felesége tudja, hogy találkozik egy másik nővel, utána ő nem jön haza, és ki van kapcsolva a telefonja, hogy én szerintem tök mindegy, hogy mi történt. Mert maga a, az árulás, vagy nyilván itt a férje is tisztában van azzal, hogy ez mit jelent a feleségének, hogy, hogy mit él át, azért az tisztába kell lennie, szóval, hogy, hogy szerintem ma, a, a nem hazajövettel az egyértelmű, és az biztos, és az, és az orientáló az Anna számára, hogy, hogy mi van ebben a házasságban. Még akkor is, ha nem tudja, hogy most megcsalták, vagy sem. So the, on the other hand, uh, the fact that... Uh... 
Anna's character uh, knows that he's meeting with the friend and, and knows that uh, he doesn't come home that night and she knows that his phone is turned off. I mean, all of these... Um, all of these facts are kind of, I mean, it's, it's irrelevant if they get together or not, or if they've had, you know, a, re a relationship or not, because it's the gesture itself, the fact itself. And uh, what she experiences uh, in knowing this, whether, again, it's the infidelity or not, it's, it's, it's besides the point. Yeah, it's this attention that she lacks from him as much as her son lacks attention <laughs> for his own. Yeah. I, maybe one other question. Uh, uh, you had said that, well, maybe the this um, you know the suppression of emotion was maybe something typically Hungarian, but. Uh, the only other thing that I, I saw in this film that I thought was typically Hungarian was the fact that Shimon has uh, saber fencing lessons, right? Which uh, is probably a lot more common in, in Budapest than in most other places. But the rest of the film seemed very universal to me. I mean, so many of these situations is something that young parents everywhere in the Western world is familiar with. Uh, you know, we all feel these pressures, the financial pressures, I think are pretty universal in any big city. Everything is expensive, uh, you know, money is tight. And, uh, you know, in, in, um, in Anna's house, it's the, the kitchen sink that's dripping. In my house right now, it's the toilet that I haven't gotten fixed and, you know, I'm feeling guilty about. So, uh, <laughs> I just wonder, you know, was there anything else in the film that I missed that you felt was specific either to Hungary or maybe to East Central Europe? Because um, I know you've lived in Germany, you, you've seen what life is like there. Uh, was there anything else that you felt was more specific to a, a local audience? Az a kérdés, hogy mi az, ami még Magyarország specifikus lenne? Pontosan, tehát hogy mi az az, ami még esetleg olyan, ami nem vett észre, vagy esetleg olyan dolog, amit, amit te úgy éreztél, hogy ez, ez inkább ilyen hungárikum lehetne mondani, és nem csak... Szóval, hogy, hogy azt, nem, azt nem tudom, hogy, hogy önökkel, hogy van, vagy hogy nyugat-európai nagyvárosokban is ez a... Tehát az, hogy szoros az idő, és sosem elég a pénz, és minden nagyon drága, az biztos úgy van, de azért valahogy az, hogy ahhoz, hogy mondjuk megjavítasson valaki egy mosogatót, ahhoz az anyósától kell kölcsön kérnie. Tehát, hogy, hogy a magyar középosztály olyan súlyosan van legatyásodva, tehát, hogy, hogy egyszerűen nincs tartalék, az így elmúlt, valahogy el, elfogyott, és ez, ennek a nyomasztása szerintem, tehát, hogy nem arról van szó, hogy nem tudunk elutazni, nyaralni, hanem ha bármi beüt, akkor kölcsön kell kérni. És ez szerintem egy másik szint, mint ami Nyugat-Európában van, én azt hiszem. Okay, so um, it's true that many of the um, of the situations are similar, and yes, it's true that there are certain uh, things that may uh, be common uh, between the East and West, but the one thing here, as far as uh, Geoffrey was concerned, is that the middle class, as, as, as it is, I mean, it's not that they can't go uh, on holiday or anything like that, but the fact that in, in the film, for example, that Anna or the family, I should say, has to ask the mother-in-law for money just to go ahead and fix the sink. I mean, it's, you, you just, the middle class can't put money away. And so there is a different level as far as finances is concerned. And just this, you know, uh, they have money they have money for certain things and they just don't have money for other things it's just you can't put that much away or save up to you know if anything happens basically you're going to have to borrow money from somebody okay make what while i need yes sorry no unless you Go want ahead. to say something no, i just wanted to ask Sophie if there was something else that i that she felt like i okay so I wanted to say as somebody who is uh, a Westerner, but I've spent a considerable amount of time in Hungary to answer Chris's question, I would say that one of the very Hungarian things about your movie was all the doors. 
<laughs> there are just so many doors everywhere you go. They're bumping into each other. And this is, to me, it's very, very reminiscent of these apartments that had a door for everything and a small hallway with 14 doors in them. And I, would, I kept noticing, you know, not just the, the sink or the, and of course the bookshelves. Um, that's the other thing you always see in a, in a, for instance, a middle-class home in Hungary, every living room has floor to ceiling bookshelves. And uh, so those were, those are things that struck me as very, very Hungarian, but the doors especially. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Sasha, did you have another one or are we ready to wrap up? Um, I don't have anything ready, but yeah, I'm just like thinking about this separation of space with the doors and the main problem of one of the problems, main problems in the film is the time management, right? Or like inability to basically be in the present because of all of these uh, tasks. And uh, I'm just like thinking how, how these two may be or may not relate it. Um, hmm. um, but that's that's like a, a, a completely de not lehet, a kevesebb ajtó lenne a lakásunkban, akkor szabadabb életet élnénk, lehet, hogy így van. Perhaps if we had less doors, maybe we would have more time to deal with all these different things. More time. End, she does she does crawl under a table. You know? I love that scene. That's a great one too. Mm. Yeah, it seems that finding a space for yourself, despite all these doors that grant you privacy, is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. um, so there is this like a paradox in a way that is a uh, Central European type. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really nice idea. Hmm. Do you have uh, films in the works? Are you working on something? Um, erre valahogy azt, azt szoktam mondani, hogy ez valahogy előttem is titok, hogy mit <laughs> So the way she usually answers this question is that it's uh, still a mystery to her, but yeah, it could it could be it could be it could be something something could soon be in the works. She just still doesn't know about it yet. De de valahogy hát igen, így morfondírozok dolgokon, de például tegnap azt hiszem, hogy van egy nagyon jó film címem, de nem nem árulhatom, tehát a címe már nem van. He actually was just thinking about this yesterday, and she actually. Uh, came up with a great title. She's not going to let us know, but she has a new title for the next film. So that's de, a de step. Azzal biztatom magam, ami a, a Virg, amit a Virginia Woolf mond a, a House-nak az elején, hogy van egy első mondatom. Szóval végül is, még akár ebből is lehet valami. Uh, miben mondta? Ez Sofi, bocsánat, nem hallott. Órák című filmben mondta. Az órákban. So in the hours, there's, she, she keeps... Uh, um, Mm, what does she keep doing? She keeps, uh, mm, I, I can't say this word right now, but uh, basically she, she keeps referring to the Virginia Woolf quote in the hours where she says, uh, I have a short sentence. <laughs> She's ah, like, uh, thank you, Jovene. Uh, says it, that's Virginia Woolf in the hours, in the film. I have a first sentence. So she has, she have a, you have a first sentence and a title. <laughs> no, I have just the title. Just the title, no first sentence. <laughs> no first sentence, but Virginia Woolf had the first sentence and just a great book like uh, um, Mrs. Dalloway came from it. For sure, and, uh, for sure. I think we have, we have some hope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll certainly all be rooting for uh, the success of that project or, or whichever the next one is. Thank you so much for, for uh, sharing uh, your thoughts with us and helping us uh, uh, understand this film better. It, it was really a, a great film and, and uh, it's, it's always so nice to have this conversation to get a little closer to it. Yeah, I would second Chris and say it's a wonderful film. I really enjoyed it. And thank, thank you, you for being with thank us. You. Thank you very much.
every success. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. And thank you to our audience, not only for uh, today's program, but those of you who joined us for uh, previous uh, uh, installments of the East Central European Film Series. Uh, I'm not sure because uh, I'm stepping down from this role, but I, I suspect we may have a new film series next year on a, a, a new theme. Uh, so certainly check out the Harriman Institute web pages uh, in, in the days to come to, to find out what, uh, what new cinema or old cinema may be from East Central Europe will be bringing you. So thanks again to all of our participants. Thank you, Miriam, for helping uh, uh, get it across. My pleasure, my pleasure. Bye. <laughs>